Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design and this is Throwback Thursday. I'm filming this on kind of a raw and rainy and windy November Sunday afternoon after Thanksgiving. And I've got my ratty old comfy sweater on because it's cold. Um, but I thought today we would do a little mixed media tutorial just to mix things up a little bit. And I pulled out of my stash this beautiful Time for Home collection from Chow Bella. This is an older collection. I don't know what year it came out. I don't know if you can still get it. I was looking for a year on it, but I'm not finding one. But it's all these gorgeous winter blues. Lots of winter birds, which I love. This is the 6x6. Six six. And, um, you know, just grays and blues and creams. Really beautiful winter-themed paper. I've got the 6x6, six six, which we're not going to use. I've got some tags from this 8.5x11 um, A4 pad. And we're not going to use these either. But I just want you to see how beautiful they all are. I just love this collection. I'm really partial to Blue Jays. I grew up in Vermont, lots of blue jays in Vermont in the wintertime, and sometimes they're the only real flash of color you get in the middle of all that white and gray. And then this is the 12 by 12 pad. I think I got this at ASC Supplies online, um, ASC Scrapbooking Supplies. They're one of my favorite stores, um, but it was a while back. So anyway, this is a quick look at the paper. But what we're going to be working with is this pile of scraps. I've got all these scraps left over from other projects. And I want to show you how to put these together to create sort of a collaged background. And, um, and then emboss it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to start. I've got some Tim Holtz. Distress Collage Medium in Matte. And we're just going to take this and brush it over this scrap of paper. It doesn't matter what color you use. In fact, I took two pieces and um, joined them together. You're just creating sort of a, uh, a piece that can receive your paper. And then we're going to take faded jeans, distress ink, and we're just going to start fitting these papers down. And it's okay to overlap. It's okay to go out over the side. You'll see, we're just going to put this together. This is kind of a fun, easy technique for collage. Um, And raw edges are nice. Um, I actually have these two big pieces which work pretty nicely. And this stuff, this collage medium dries really fast. So if you need to, you can Put a little on the back of your paper just as you overlap and create this sort of I like this little bit that has the music paper in it see so you can see I'm not really worrying about square edges or papers matching or anything I'm just layering in and then let's see, I know I've got some really small scraps in here.
This is a brayer tool. If you have one of these, it's handy for pressing these pieces into place. And I just need a little something, something, something to cover up this little place. So this is a great way to use up dribs and drabs of a paper collection. And I like the way the torn edges work rather than straight edges. I, I just think it looks more organic, but um, you can you can do whatever. Really, by the time we're finished, it won't matter, and you'll see. I'm just going to put... This. Tucking this underneath. All right, that's good. Now I pre-cut my panel to be five by seven. And we didn't end up with any big overhangs. I'm just gonna come in with this and um, kind of trim this off. And now I'm going to take this over. I'm gonna use an embossing folder and I'm going to emboss, dry emboss over this. And I'll show you the result. I have a cut emboss machine. So my sandwich is different than pretty much everybody's, but follow the instructions on your uh, machine to do the embossing. So my cut emboss would not take the Sizzix embossing folder, so I had to pull out my big shot. And I used my platform on the second tab with just the embossing folder and my paper. And it did a good job. You can see it on the back better than on the front. Um, this is a smaller folder than what I have for paper. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. I didn't go ahead and do the edge. And now what we're going to do to bring these snowflakes out is I'm just taking a little bit of Distress Ink and I'm very lightly just brushing over that design to make it pop from the paper. See how pretty? And I'm hardly putting any pressure on my blending tool at all. I'm, uh, I'm just barely skimming over. And always remember circular motion. You start from the outside edge and you work your way in. And that way you don't end up with, um, you know, bad marks on your paper. I'm just going to come in and darken these up a little bit more because I'm really liking the way this is looking. Isn't that pretty? So we've created this pretty background. This is an older embossing folder. I don't know if you can still get it from Sizzix or other places online, but um, you could use any 3D embossing folder for this. So now I'm going to take my ink and I'm going to brush my edges well. And then I'm going to come back in. Clean my brush off a little bit right over here. This is Distress Collage Medium. This is the crazing. This one it dries, creates these neat little cracks and crevices. So we're gonna put this down. Um, you wanna think like putting butter on bread. That's about the thickness you wanna go for with this. That's what I found um, creates the best cracks. And you can let this dry on its own. Like, you know, go do a load of laundry or vacuum or whatever, because it also dries pretty quickly. Or you can use your heat tool, which is what I'm going to do. Okay. 
So can you see how the background just kind of all blends in together and it looks really good. Now I'm gonna heat dry it. So here we are all dry. And you can see I've kind of got these great little textured, um, crazed areas on this. And it's all nice and dry. It's a little bumpy, but that's okay because ultimately we're gonna stitch this onto a panel of um, burlap. So then I took this Spellbinders grid die. Um, this is from, I think, Save the Date. And I die cut two grids, one from a Tim Holtz uh, wood grain cardstock, and then the other just from gray. And we're gonna overlap these. And I think if I do, I think if I use this collage medium, I can make this easy on myself. And just put the collage medium on the gray. And then I want to overlap the white. Like this. So now you've got a drop shadow in your window pane. All right, so now I've backed my window frame with some um, clear acrylic. And now I'm gonna make frosty windows. You can see how I put my Dry's Clear Glitter Glue in there. And this is Rene Bouquet's Pearl Fine German Glass Glitter. I'm just gonna shake this over Tap it out, and look, we've got frosty window panes. How fun is that? So I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry while we move on to the next step. All right, guys, here's our shaker window with our image on the back. And you can see how great these frosty window panes look. I did three layers of eighth inch foam strips and then really pressed it down in there. This is so pretty. And I used a mix of Buttons Galore. This is their Blizzard. This one, I think, is Sprinklets. It's the beads and the sequins together. And I like it because it's really icy and sparkly. This one is called Summer Nights, but I used it for the buttons. And the little pop of contrast with the blue is nice. And this one, I think, is called Avalanche. So that's what I used for the shaker. And you can see it just turned out super cute. I love the frosty window panes. That is a great trick. All right, let's go ahead and start putting this little guy together. So I'm gonna bring in my base. As you can see, I stitched this onto some canvas and then just fringed the edges. And then I backed it with a nice sturdy piece of chipboard so that it would lay nice and flat. Now we're gonna glue down our window. This is pretty simple. There's not like a ton of layers. The layers are all in that mixed media background. So the actual project is fairly simple. And I want to do this kind of down in this right hand corner because I want all these snowflakes and embossing to show. Then I went into my Renee Bouquets, and these are her Holly Swags, and I heat embossed these with a Stampendous Shabby Blue Embossing Enamel. This is beautiful stuff, and you always want to shake this up before you use it. And we're just going to put this down. Oh, 
I'll come back and get those glue webs later. And then I have another one for the top. Here's what I do sometimes when I want to have a little um, height, but I don't. I go ahead and I put my hot glue on the back. Just like a little dot, almost like a pearl. And then just set that aside for a second. Those will harden and then you'll be able to um, add glue on top of that glue and you'll have the dimension that you want. And I've got this gorgeous shabby snowflake that I think I want right here. But I want to wait until I get that other piece put up there. Okay, so now I just added another layer of my glue on top of this and it goes right there, so pretty. And I think what we want to do now is our flowers. So I tied a square knot with a long piece of ribbon here and then tucked the ends under my um, clothespins. I found those glitter clothespins in my stash. And now I'm gonna put another blob of glue here and put my bow on top, just like that. Oops. Okay. Once that glue sets up, I'll deal with any blobs. That need to be taken care of. I want to take our little Renee Bouquet's Snowball Girl and glue her down in with this holly. So sweet. And now we need to start building our flowers. I've still got some of these leaves. I think you can still get these in Renee's Etsy shop. She doesn't have them on her website, but I think you can get them in her Etsy shop. And they are beautiful.
guys. Here it is all finished. This is so sweet. I love blue and white for winter. I did tuck this large snowflake back behind so that it um, could be part of the party. And I added a little pearl here. Just so pretty. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. It's so fun making these winter creations. And um, that's it for me. I'm going to clean up this mess and go get my craft on. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Mm -hmm.